Scott, there's a question up here. I'll just um, uh, keep you up on this one. Can you give us a couple of ex examples of Internet of Things and, and what type of jobs you might be able to get out of that? Yeah, great point. So at the moment, we're looking at um, so, so some of the pieces of work that I'm, I'm doing are digital transformation. So service design, product design, um, and then digital workflow. So they're, they're things that can um, obviously innovate what a current, say, engineering firm might be delivering or what a current professional service um, company might be delivering. And then we, we look at how they can 21st centuryize their service delivery. So um, looking at the Internet of Things is obviously not just digitizing, but making sure that if we're building someone a digital workflow, that their entire team understands what that means to the business. Um, so we're, we're seeing a lot of growth in that space at the moment with, with works that we're doing. Um, and then there's six councils across Gippsland um, that are all exploring um, how they can start to support this, um, this digital transition within the economy. Because you know, last year we saw a number of businesses create websites for um, the lockdown period so they could transition and, and, and have an online presence. But they haven't connected all of their services or products to that platform and they, they still struggle with the, the amount of work that they've done to do that um, to then want to go back to what they were doing in 2019. So we're, we're really seeing this need for people with those skill sets to come to the region and to, to support that transition to keep moving forward. So, so these are people like, um, instead of data analysts, people like business analysts, project managers, you know, even just basic administration people to, to do the volume of work that needs to be done in order to finish off this transition, um, given that the pandemic um, really has accelerated online selling, uh, in particular in e-commerce, probably five years and six months. And there's a lot of work that needs to be done there to catch up. Absolutely. And, and we don't expect that work to slow down because we then see other industries catching up as well and then that work starts to spread, um, which is what's happening. Uh, Michael mentioned before the green economy in Ballarat, which is, I love hearing that. We're, we're planning that in Gippsland, but we've got to get rid of the, <laughs> the elephant in the room first um, before we can talk about clean energy. But that's kind of a part of a transition as well where we'll need people to be able to understand how to deliver projects in that space. Um, and so that whole kind of gamut of professional services becomes required because we've only got, so we've got Fed Uni's one campus um, in Gippsland. Uh, we do have a couple of other universities with presence. Um, TAFE Gippsland is the main RTO that delivers education across the, um, the, the Gippsland region, but there's, there's only a restricted number of places that go through those two main institutions. So. You know, the, the reverse brain drain, we used to talk about it in Gippsland as losing the talent from Gippsland to the city. Now we're trying to use the reverse vacuum to suck people down to Gippsland to start filling these positions because we, we, we need them now, not, not five years' time. And, and to, uh, and to um, you know, for those of you who haven't visited Gippsland, um, you know, once you get to Lake Centrans and Meetung and, and these places are so beautiful out that way. Um, you know, jump in your car, go for a drive, um, because it's well worth it. I think you'll fall in love with the place.